I thought, hello, Internet. Welcome to Poops Theory. Hello, it was pretty funny. Internet. And welcome to Poops Theory. <laughs> <laughs> hello, I'm Mr. Snapper. And I'm Red Snapper. And this is Project Nutmeg. <laughs> Okay, so nutmeg and agility. In another video, we told you what to expect when you take your dog to agility classes. To watch that video, click the button on your screen or find the link in the description below. Today is all about nutmeg. That's why we call it Project Nutmeg. That's why. <laughs> Damn it. And she's leaving. There she is. <laughs> she's in agility class to learn more stunts for the stage and to burn off some of that excess Aussie doodle energy. In this video, we're going to talk about Nutmeg's experience through basic agility. Nutmeg was approved for basic agility after she graduated basic obedience. There are more obedience levels and we're going to complete her obedience training yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I think agility will really help her with obedience. She's pretty fearless and she loves to climb on things. Obviously, she loves climbing on things. I open the door to my sewing room and she parkours her way onto the cutting table. She was ready to monkey around when she got her private evaluation for um, anything at Zoom Room. Agility is a natural fit, especially for the Aussie part of her genetics. Yeah, so that first visit to Zoom Room, uh, she was she was really excited. She was a little maniac on her first day of basic agility. She wanted to do everything and really explore the space. Nutmeg started agility when we still had Buster, so the older dogs stayed home and they were just kicking it on the couch, watching Netflix, I think. Yeah. And I got to watch Nutmeg's growth from the sidelines. It was really hard to get her to focus in the very beginning. Zoom Room only does dog training, and the training rooms are full of smells that appeal to dogs. They do vacuum between classes, and pet parents will clean up if their dogs make any messes. They do keep it clean. <laughs> they do. Room. They keep it clean. Great facility. They keep it clean. But still, there are a lot of smells for dogs and lots of really fun things to take her attention because they'll break out different toys and um, regular real-life items like baby strollers and walkers and stuff to, yeah. to see how the dog reacts to these things that they would see in the world. Well, they sell treats there too, and they have like this little, like stepped display of jars with like raw hides and what the yak cheese yeah. and yeah. and she's like was hopping up onto that. Yeah, she was trying to hop from level to level because that's she likes to be on things. Yeah, and there were lots of things to smell on those little shelves. Mm -hmm. So part of her focus issues is what we all saw at her stage debut. She's part poodle, and poodles are people pleasers. Mm -hmm. She's a little performer. She wants people to watch her and tell her she did a good job. I mean, honestly, what performer doesn't want people to watch you and tell you you did a good job? Right, exactly. On, on that note, if you're enjoying what you're watching, be sure to like uh, and subscribe. Boop that bell for notifications. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us we're pretty. We're not part poodle, but we... We don't want to hear anything other than you're pretty. No, I mean, we do want to hear other stuff, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you can keep your stupid opinions in your pocket. <laughs> or, at this point, we'll take any comments. <laughs> she... Nutmeg, that is. Nutmeg wants people to watch her and tell her she did a good job. It was like... She would go over some obstacle and then look around to make sure everyone saw that she did it. Did you it. catch that? Did you see, it? Did you see you what get, I did? Did you get that on camera? She'd jump over a hurdle and immediately walk like, over like, hey, yeah, everyone else here saw that, right? I think her priorities are meeting people, then getting pets, and then doing the work. She met almost everyone who came to her debut performance. Everybody who was willing to pet this dog got to pet this dog. Yeah, if she were like a human performer, it would have been a total scandal. Oh, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been like, or, you know, a, a super spreader event for mononucleosis. Oh, for sure. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally mono. Uh, but in the agility class, once the newness had worn off a bit and she knew what was expected, she was a lot more confident and focused. It's not that she was never distracted. She was just distracted less or... She put her attention where it needed to be, which was on the trainer. Right. Each level of agility builds up that focus 
that thing that nutmeg needs. And I mean, I need it. Everybody needs a little more focus, right? <laughs> the way the room was set up, nutmeg had a table in the middle and that was home base. The equipment was arranged around the table. So in basic agility, we worked on the equipment in small wedges. For example, she'd start on the table and then she would hop over a hurdle, go through a tunnel, hop over another hurdle and return to the table before she'd get a treat. Then we would go back the other way, which I call doing the Ginger Rogers, going backwards and in heels. After she did a couple of wedges or went through the weaving poles, which were sort of set up separately, Red and Nutmeg left the training room so that another dog and handler could have their turn. Like we mentioned in that earlier video about what to expect in agility, everyone takes turns. Outside the training room, Red kept working on basic obedience with Nutmeg. It was, you know, it was still work time. Mm -hmm. And when it was their turn to go back into the training room, they worked on a different wedge where they would focus on the poles or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. We go through fewer treats during the agility classes than obedience classes, which is good because Nutmeg is a little thick. <laughs> She's used to performing a circuit of moves like that before getting a treat because that's how we worked on her routine. Agility is the same way. She works through a few pieces of equipment before she gets her treat. In obedience, I have to ply her with treats because she's distracted and she's leashed. So she can't move around and go smell something. She's got to stay leashed in her space while there are other dogs nearby. Yep. And what really paid off I think in agility, obviously her natural inclination to climb on everything helps, but it's those months of daily tricks training that, that you did with Nutmeg. I think she had four basic classes before she graduated from basic agility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she got her completion certificate. Yay. Took a celebratory lap through the training room and just look at how confident she is. I mean, just look at that cocky little dog. I'm very proud of her hard work and I enjoy the focus it's given both of us. It's a lot like being in ballet class where you can't really think about other things while you're working because you're concentrating and you're so engaged in what you're doing. I feel like agility does that and it's also helping us bond even more as if that's possible. I've loved this baby since I got the first picture. The focus thing makes a lot of sense to me too because it's like we could buy all this equipment, set it up in the backyard, set it up in the living room or whatever, but there are distractions in the home. Going to a place where you can do it means that you can really focus on what you're doing and not have to worry about like, oh, oh, I should be making dinner right now, or oh, I gotta move the laundry to the dryer, or what have you. Or, oh, she's distracted because she found a kibble underneath something. Right. It's, it's good to go to a place to practice a thing sometimes, and then you gain the confidence and ability to take it elsewhere. Right. So we can practice so, yeah. the poles in the backyard, or we can practice the Ikea tunnel in the house and exactly. work on little things because... You have that base level of of training that's been done in a real concentrated place where you're able to focus. Yeah, it's true. And we become partners in the whole thing. The partnership grows stronger the more you do things together. Isn't that funny, right? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> where have we heard that before? Where have we uh, heard that? <laughs> it's, almost as if, it's almost as if there was a book written about that Is very topic. Is there a topic. book about that, about I think strengthening your partnership strengthening by your partnership being, being working together creative, like collaborating? I think yeah. there might be a book, a book about that very topic. I think there's a book about that. Might be worth looking into. I think so. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe uh, because that helps small little niche channels like ours. Um, boop the bell for notifications and see us next time. Bye.